Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland has a new look supplement for the 2023-2024 admission cycle. And because I've done previous videos about Johns Hopkins overall, i.e. how to get in, and also in previous years when they've updated their supplement, I've also done an update video. I feel like I might as well just keep going with Johns Hopkins and give you another update based off of the 2023-2024 admission cycle supplement uh, for Johns Hopkins. So let's dive right in. I have two big points to make. Obviously, most of your attention is probably focused on the new supplemental essay question, which I will get to in just a moment. But I don't want to rush through or discount the fact that Johns Hopkins is one of those colleges that does allow a student to upload a PDF resume to their supplement. A full-fledged PDF resume is what I will say. And what I mean by that is obviously don't give them a book. I don't think any resume needs to go over two pages. But Imagine the real estate you have for two whole pages of a resume. You can take that down to 10 point font. You can do a lot of formatting with it, maybe 0.5 margins. You can share a lot of information on a two page resume. And I would highly recommend that if you have more depth and breadth to your extracurricular profile than that you were able to share on the Common Apps Activities page, that you should absolutely take Johns Hopkins up on their offer to upload a resume to the Johns Hopkins supplement. In terms of how to organize your resume beautifully in such a way where you're providing depth and breadth, quality and quantity, I strongly recommend that you go and take my short course called How to Build an Extraordinary Extracurricular Resume, which is linked below this video. You can find it over at Gumroad, but again, the link is right below this video. It's a short video, it's a cheap video. It takes like an hour or fewer. It's like, I think it's 45 or 55 minutes. Um, and you will learn everything you need to know in that quick, quick video course, short course as I call it, about how to put together a resume that you should be proud to upload to the Johns Hopkins Supplement and that will overall provide you great value added in terms of your over -applica overall application to Johns Hopkins. Now let's dive into what you probably want to talk about or you want me to talk about, which is the Johns Hopkins essay, supplemental essay in the 2023-2024 admission cycle. Before I do, I will simply say I have done previous videos about how to knock the Common App essay out of the park. I'm not going to focus on the Common App essay in this video, but again, link below this video. I will include links from my previous videos about how you should strategize, uh, you know, which prompt to pick on the Common App main essay, as well as some big pitfalls that some very smart students, which would describe you if you're looking at Hopkins, often make when they are approaching uh, their Common App essay, big mistakes that you can avoid if you watch those videos. So those, again, are linked below this video. One more thing I will say is you may not know who the heck you're watching. My name is Craig Meister. I'm the College Meister. You can go to my website, collegemeister.com, to learn more about how you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And I also publish admissions.blog, which is a website uh, where I and others write articles or news and notes related to the world of college admissions. So the essay. This is the big one. This is the one that's changed, and Johns Hopkins has been changing their essay every so often in recent years. Uh, the prompt is clearly uh, paying homage to the Supreme Court decision recently to outlaw affirmative action in the college admissions process. Here it is. Tell us about an aspect of your identity. For example, race, gender, sexuality, religion, community, etc. Or a life experience that has shaped you as an individual and how that influenced what you'd like to pursue in, John's, in, in college at Hopkins. This can be a future goal or experience that is either academic, extracurricular, or social. You have 350 words to respond, even though they say it's a 300-word limit. As of this filming, which is early August, the Common App still gives you 350 words in their text box to respond to this prompt. So if that continues, obviously use as many of the words that are available to you before they cut you off. So 350 words is certainly better than 300 because you can share much more. But if you literally are at some point in the future because they made a mistake or something cut off at 300, this is a tight essay. I mean, that's a lot to cover. I mean, race, gender, sexuality, religion, these are core elements of who we are. Plus, if we've had an experience that's been particularly impactful, you, know, you could probably write a book about this, but you only have 300 to 350 words, basically, to respond. Don't get so caught up on something that, that is, frankly, too big for you to bite off in 300 to 350 words. I would try to zero in on one aspect of your identities. It, it, what, I mean, what, I mean, what I mean by that is don't just tackle race overall. 
tackle one thing that has impacted you related maybe to an interaction you had that your race was a critical part of the story or your sexuality or your religion. Similarly, if you have none of those sort of underrepresented demographic characteristics that Johns Hopkins is clearly inquiring about, let's be frank, you all have had instances in your life that have been impactful. I don't care who you are, where you're from. We've all had relationships. We've all had interactions with individuals that have gone south or who've been really strong uh, or that have been really strong. We've all had light bulb moments in our life. And this prompt, even though obviously it's fishing for elements about someone's quote unquote identity, can really be about anything that has been a trajectory setting or values affirming or clarifying event in our lives. Um, and so you are free to share details about that experience or your identity. Again, I would not pick off your whole identity, but maybe a day in the life with that identity. And then you have to transition to showing quickly that I, that, that event. Again, I, I deal, even if you're talking about your religion or sexuality, I would go into the weeds of something that happened to you one day at church uh, or uh, maybe someone confronted you about believe, being a Christian or being a Jew or being a Muslim and how they disagreed with your viewpoint, start from a very specific event as opposed to just talking from 36,000 feet about your religion or your sexuality or your community. So get in the weeds with whatever you choose, even if it's your identity. But again, experiences are usually more tailor-made to just focusing on an experience, let's say a particular class you had or a particular day in the class that was really inspirational. And then after you show that quick scene, then you have to transition to connecting the dots for the application readers over at Hopkins about how this has influenced you uh, and how, in terms of why you're applying to Hopkins and also what how you see yourself uh, pursuing life inside and outside the classroom at Hopkins. Again, it's specifically worded as has shaped you as an individual and how that influenced what you like to pursue in college at Hopkins. And they say in parentheses, this can be future goal or experience that is either academic, extracurricular, or social. So you don't necessarily have to focus in on your major, but it's a relatively academic intellectual institution, Johns Hopkins is. They're attracting high-end students in terms of intellect, so I would probably use some of your connecting the dots part to Hopkins to allude specifically to why you want to study history at Hopkins or why you feel like studying biology at Hopkins makes a lot of sense specifically for you. And again, the specific details you give need to be uh, something that you could not also say to Columbia or you could not say to Chicago or you not, could not say to Michigan or UVA or Washington and Lee or Georgetown or what have you. If you're providing generic supporting evidence as to why you're attracted to Hopkins and how you're going to pursue this interest of yours or why this has motivated you to go to Hopkins. And you're not actually giving Hopkins specific details. You're not succeeding. You're failing. So it's extremely important that you, I think, do allude to your academic or professional goals somewhere in here. But clearly Johns Hopkins is open-minded to the fact that you could be someone who, um, it represents a certain demographic and wants to join a club related to that demographic at Hopkins. And you could theoretically get away with writing your entire essay about being in a club that promotes your identity. And um, Johns Hopkins looking for diversity and doing so in a way that is officially not based off of race alone, but the way in which you engage with race apparently is still legal. Uh, they could theoretically just fall in love with you if you talk about joining the Jewish Student Union or the Black Student Union and never even talk about uh, something specific to Hopkins uh, academically. I would still say something specific to Hopkins related to the Jewish Student Union or Black Student Union. I don't even know if they have those things. I'm just making them up. But make sure you know and make sure that you've done your research so that if you are going to really ground your response in terms of your identity and how you hope to pursue it at Hopkins and beyond, I would still get very specific about how, let's say, the Jewish Student Union or the Black Student Union at Hopkins presents a unique opportunity for you to live your le best life during your next four years, but also maybe propel you to be an advocate for, again, the Black community, the Jewish community, what have you, community, when you uh, ultimately go into the real world upon graduating from Hopkins. Because, of course, Hopkins is not truly the real world. It's a combination of utopia and dystopia because, you know, 
college life undergraduate is basically not real in the United States, but then also because it's in Baltimore, there's an element of dystopia there as well. So it's a really interesting hybrid in Baltimore and at Hopkins. But I wish you the very best of luck of getting into Hopkins. How I recommend structuring this essay overall is the way I recommend structuring all short essays. Introduction, short paragraph, maybe a sentence or two paragraph. The, have a thesis. It needs to have a thesis where you introduce you know, the aspect of your identity or the experience that you will be building the, the body around, then the body needs to prove your point and show a story quickly that gives them confidence that you really identify with these, this either identity or this experience was extremely impactful for you. And then halfway through the body, you need to transition to showing uh, how that influenced what you'd like to pursue in college at Hopkins. Again, I would still recommend it be focused primarily on academics, but you have the freedom, depending on how efficient you are with your words, to refer to how you see yourself engaging in Hopkins life extracurricular wise or socially. And I would also try in the conclusion to say something new, and that could be a wonderful place to allude to how you see this empowering you upon graduating from Hopkins and giving you tools that you wouldn't have if you were graduating from a similarly ranked or similarly prestigious uh, school. Uh, obviously, don't mention those other schools, but you really want to give the application readers at Hopkins confidence that you have eyes only for Hopkins so that the readers, by the time they're done this application, feel like you were made for Hopkins and Hopkins is made for you. Again, my name is Craig Meister. To learn more about me, go to collegemeister.com and you can also sign up to work with me one-on-one -on -one if I still have spaces available. Otherwise, I wish you again the very best of luck in the 2023-2024 admission cycle. If you're watching this in the future because this essay gets recycled maybe in the future, good luck on whatever admission cycle you find yourself in. Otherwise, stay safe, stay well, and I wish you the very, very best of luck getting into Johns Hopkins and Homewood section of Baltimore, Maryland.